there's also quite a, young, quite a few young people that have gotten their first salvation or their first presentations. So it's so great to see uh, everybody coming together, all different ages, different countries. I just want to hear from the Aussies. Can I hear from the Aussies? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Oi, oi, oi! Alright, they're all, okay, great. So that's from Aussies. What about from the US? US, US, US! come to Fiji, you know, uh, uh, appreciate Pastor Anderson, of course, for helping us cover the financial costs uh, with the accommodation. Praise God for that. Uh, there are so many people, you know, uh, the vehicles picking us up, few of you rented, like everyone is pulling their weight. And to be honest with you, I was a little, I was very stressed. I thought when we get here, I don't know what's going on. Like, I, 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 hope, I hope somebody knows what's going on. 
But praise God that everybody's doing a bit of everything and everything has gone smoothly so far. So look, when I was thinking about that topic, I was thinking about the power of teamwork and how so many of us have come from different countries, different churches, we're working together, okay? And I really thank you, I really appreciate each one of you. And when I got thinking about teamwork, obviously, I thought about this chapter in Exodus 17. So if you look at Exodus 17 and verse number 8, the Bible reads, Then came Amalek, that's the Amalekites, and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. This is a great historical story about teamwork. You've got Moses who recognizes the dangers of the Amalekites. They're coming, you know, with their armies to wipe out the Israelites. And Moses chooses one of his men, Joshua. He says, hey, Joshua, choose out men. Choose your soldiers. We need to go and battle against the Amalekites. Now, of course, in the New Testament days that we live in, we're not going out and wrestling against flesh and blood, but we're fighting a spiritual warfare as we go out and we preach the gospel here in Fiji. We're putting on the whole armor of God. We're taking the sword of the Spirit. And hey, there's some supernatural things going on as well. There are forces of darkness blinding the minds and the hearts of Fijians. And we're going and shining the light of Jesus Christ and His glorious gospel. And so, you know, in this story, we could say that we represent Joshua and his men. You know, Joshua and his men actually going out and doing the battle. Of course, we're doing a spiritual battle. But then you've got Moses. And Moses says, I'm going to go to the top of the hill. So Moses himself, he's not involved directly in the battle, but he's involved indirectly. He's, he's further back. He's watching the battle from, from the top. And let's continue what it says there. It says in verse number 10, so Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. So Moses organizes his team. He goes up, you know, on top of the hill. He's got Aaron, he's got Hur, who's going to help him as he goes to the top of the hill. You know, Moses represents those that are back home. You know, we've got people in our churches that are praying for us, right? They're, they're back in Australia or they're back in whatever country they're in. Hey, there is much part of this mission trip, you know, as we are, but they're on top of the hill. They're praying for us. They're keeping us, you know, in mind and in prayer. You know, some, some of you have shared where you've had your church members and friends who have helped you financially to come on this trip, okay? And they very much, Moses represents them. They're afar, they're involved. They're not directly involved, but they're indirectly involved. And what we're going to discover in this story, that the work of Moses was essential to having the Amalekites defeated. But what we see here is teamwork, working together to overcome the Amalekites. Let's continue there in verse number 12. Sorry, verse number 11, verse number 11. It says, And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. So, you know, we can have a story about Moses you know, up on a hill. You know, he's, he's up high. You know, the, the armies can see him. And when Moses lifts up his hand, you know, the Israelites are having victory. They defeat the Amalekites. He's got his hands up for about battle second bit of time. Right? I mean, this is a week-long soul winning trip. All right? And, uh, you know, if you're going to hold up your hands for a week, you're going to get pretty tired, right? And so as Moses starts to tire and his hands start to drop, then all of a sudden the Amalekites start to defeat, start, start to win in the battle, okay? So from, from afar, uh, the, the work that Moses is doing is as he lifts up his hand, signifying his prayers before God, invoking God to be a help to them. As his hands are lifting up, the Israelites are winning. But as he gets tired, then the Amalekites start to win in the battle, okay? And so, hey, I, like, I, I completely understand. I mean, have you ever gone to prayer for a long period of time? I, I, I struggle just myself having a one hour prayer. Like it's, it's exhausting, like mentally exhausting, spiritually exhausting. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, what, did I finish that prayer? Because like, it is, it is, there, is, there is a spiritual mental battle when it comes to lifting up our hands and praying before God. But you see, all of these elements are necessary in order to defeat the Amalekites. You know, this is a perfect example of teamwork. And as I said to you, what I look at, what I look at tonight, you know, I, I'm definitely seeing great teamwork, great love, great fellowship, great rejoicing as we go together and encourage one another to go out and do a spiritual work, you know, here in Fiji. Now, it says there in verse number uh, 12. Let's look at verse number 12. 
But Moses' hands were heavy, like I explained. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on. Okay, so Moses was standing for a while. You know, his helpers come along, teamwork. They say, Moses, here's a stone. Here's the chair. Sit down. Like, relax. Take it easy, right? Uh, you know, uh, get some rest. And so they do that. And then it says here, And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Like, think about that. Moses had his hands lifted up all day long till sunset. And obviously, he could not do it by himself. So, he got, he's got Aaron on one side, he's got her on the other side, and they're lifting up their, his arms for him, right? I mean, I'm sure by the end of the day, the arms of Moses, they're, they're exhausted, they're tired, they're probably shaking, they're probably numb, he probably can't feel it. But with the help of his team, they were able to keep his hands lifted up. As we keep going down in verse 13, it says, And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. So Joshua and his army, his soldiers, they're having success against the Amalekites. Okay? So once again, this is all a team effort. Alright? You know, if Moses is not doing what he's doing by lifting up his hands, the Israelites are losing. But if Joshua's not doing what he's doing, right, what's the point of Moses lifting up his hands? There's no battle to be had. I mean, you know, the Amalekites would win automatically if the Israelites did not have an army. And so what we see are different elements, okay, different areas where we're working together to do something great for our Lord God. And then, uh, oh, by the way, like I said, you know, when, when I think about when I think about you guys today, like I, I'm so overwhelmed. You know, even though so many of you have said to me, "Thank you, Pastor, I really appreciate it." Like I said, no, no, no thank you. Like your, your 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 love, your generosity. You know, the fact that you guys are sometimes just like you're paying for for taxis and you're you know you're shouting people lunches and you know sometimes you're you know swapping uh, accommodation to help others that might be a little bit uncomfortable in one situation or another. Just like the teamwork that I'm seeing, the love. You know, it, it's so amazing to see so many of you you know from different places and yet we all love each other because of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? He's our Savior. That's what connects us. The way we speak is different. The way we act is different. The churches that we attend, they're all different. Okay? But at the end of the day, what we have in common is the loving grace and the shed blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is where we have the companionship and the love and the fellowship one toward another. Now, so Joshua wins, right? The Amalekites are defeated. It says here they're discomfited with the edge of the sword. And so the mission gets done, the work gets done. And then what do we see here in verse 14? And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this, for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Am Amalek from under the sun. What do we see here? Once the victory has been won, okay, once the teamwork has accomplished what they need to accomplish, you know, Moses tells Joshua, hey, write this down, make a memorial. How would we apply that today? Photographs, videos. You know, share what we're doing on social media. You know, also, we're doing a great job, but hey, we need a memorial. We, we, we need some, uh, we need to gather some evidence to show the work that we've done so we can remind ourselves at the end of this week, you know, as we go on back to our churches, back to our regular life, we can look back at the photos and the videos, you know, and, and whatever, however else you're documenting this trip, you know, and that can be an encouragement for you, and that can be a way that you can encourage others. Okay, so don't forget that. Make sure you got your photos, make sure you got your videos, share them on social media, not to show off. Okay, we're not showing off. Hey, if not for Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. Okay, we're simply just a simple empty vessel being used by the power of the Holy Ghost to do a great work for Him. And so, all glory goes to Jesus Christ. Amen. All glory goes to Him. All right. So, this is the example that we see of teamwork. And this is what I've seen from day number one. You know, as I said, I was a bit concerned even when I was landing to Suba. All right, are there taxes? What's it going to cost? Uh, you know, and then, and then Sam turns up in his van. And then brother uh, Peter turns up in his car. It's like, oh, okay, we've got, a com we, we got vehicles sorted. We've got a combination sorted. Again, it's the teamwork. It's, it's the effort where everyone's coming together to do a great work for our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to talk about what destroys teamwork, okay? Like so far, so good. So far, so good. We're working to, together. We're getting some great numbers. We've got some great testimonies. But there's also something that will destroy our teamwork. So, uh, Brother Ash, if you don't mind, can I use you as an example? If I can get you over here, yeah, Brother Ash, I'll get you up here. 
Come over here. Brother, Brother Ash is going to represent Moses, okay? Brother Ash, you'll represent Moses. So let, let me tell you what's going to destroy teamwork, okay? If, if we can overcome these things, I don't, maybe, so, I don't know all of you, right? I, like, I, I look out here and I think, man, everyone seems great, everyone seems wonderful, but I don't know your hearts, all right? I mean, we know that our hearts are desperately wicked. Who can know it? Sometimes the Bible speaks of such things, okay? And so if, if you're one of these people, you could be a hindrance to the teamwork this week. And so what I'm trying to say and, ch and challenge you, please don't be this person. Right? If you recognize yourself as one of these people, change it tonight. Okay, so we can just have a, have a great uh, week as we get, continue uh, preaching the gospel here in Fiji. But I'm going to use Brother Ashley's example. You're, you're Moses in my, in my example, okay? So I need you to lift up your arms. Okay, so Brother Ash, oh, Moses here is, is getting tired, okay, and we know that, you know, Aaron was on one side and, and Herb was on the other side, you know, helping keep those arms up. But this is not, this is the one that you don't want to be, right? Where Moses needs help. Moses needs a team behind him. So this person comes up, oh, hold it up, Moses, I'll be your help right here. Hey, everyone, I'm helping Moses. Hey, everyone, look what I'm doing. Hey guys, no one else is helping Moses. I'm doing all the work here, guys. Hey, who's that person? The self-promoter. Can you give me a chance? <laughs> That's the self-promoter. Okay? Don't be self-promoting. Don't be prideful. Oh, look at me. And want to be seen by the eyes of men. Look, are there people like that in our churches? Probably. Okay? This is part of the sinful flesh. This is part of the pride of man. And if we're not careful, then the pride starts and before you know it, you're the, look at me, I'm the hero, I'm the star, the self-promoter. Don't be that person. That destroys teamwork. Why? Because it becomes about me. Me, 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 me. It doesn't become about us. It doesn't become about Jesus. Okay? Jesus is the one we're promoting. But the self-promoter, he wants to promote himself. And this is destructive with a team effort. Okay, this is destructive in a team effort. You guys know this passage. In Matthew 6, 2, it says, Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. The self-promoter has their reward. Look at me! Yeah, well done! Woo! That's your reward. I don't know about you, brethren, but I'm looking to uh, lay down my treasures in heaven. I want my reward to be in heaven where there's an interest rate a hundredfold, right? You put it, you, you invest $10 in eternal matters and it comes back a thousand dollars, right? That tenfold comes back a thousand dollars, right? That's where I want to lay out my treasures, where we glorify Christ and we take down the pride and we're not there being self-promoters. A self-promoter will destroy teamwork. If that's your heart tonight, change it. Fix it, right? Please fix it because I want your labor and efforts to matter for eternity, okay? Not just today for the praise of men. Amen. All right, what about the second person that destroys teamwork? Let me tell you about that person. This is the one, Moses, lift up your hands, all right? This is the one that says, hey Moses, I can help. Can I help Moses? Okay. Okay, we're doing this for a while. Help, I'm helping Moses, all right? We're winning the battles against the Amalekites. Ah, oh, this is so tiring, Moses. Ah, oh, man, it's, I mean, I, I've got other things to do. Like, do, do you really need one? Man, this is really frustrating coming here and helping Moses. Like, you offered to help! And now you're complaining about your offer of help! You can rest your hands. That person is disingenuous, okay? That person is fake. Are there people like that? Yes, there are people like that! Pastor, I would like to do this! Alright! Look, have your hearts true and pure. You know what? We come to work together. We come to serve one another. Please don't be the whiner. Don't be the complainer. Right? We're here to say, look, all of us have sacrificed something to be on this trip today. Okay? I'm sacrificing my time with my wife. Okay? I love my wife. I don't want to be away from her. That's part of my sacrifice, right? We've all sacrificed something. And, you know, it's not easy. I know it's not easy for everybody to have made the trip here to Fiji. But you know what? When we offer our help, when we say, I'd like to be part of the team, that's not the time to whine and complain. 
Okay? Especially when people are making a lot of efforts in making this possible. And then we might I don't know what people I don't know. Maybe you've heard some complaint, I don't know. But look, if you're a complainer, if you're a murmurer, change. Okay? If that's you, if in your heart right now, you're saying, ah, oh, my accommodation needed to be ten times better than this, right? Oh, oh, why do we have to catch a taxi? There should have been enough uh, transportation for everyone. Whatever, whatever your heart's matter is, okay? If that is in your heart, you're a murmurer, you're a complainer, change because you're going to damage your team. You're going to hurt the teamwork, okay? So please, don't be that person. Don't be that, don't be, don't, don't be that person this week. Don't be that person in your church either, okay? Please don't be that person. The Bible says in Philippians 2.14, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Do all things without murmuring. Oh, I don't want to do this. So frustrated. I could be doing something better than this. Don't be that person. Why? It says that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. What is that verse saying? That verse is saying that in this world, the general populace, they are murmurers, they are complainers, they are disputers. And one thing that's going to differentiate you from the rest of the world is when you serve and you don't murmur and you don't complain. You shine as the sons of God. You demonstrate yourself to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and a child of God. Please don't be the whiner. Don't be the complainer. Okay? One, one rule that I have is if someone recognizes some issue, something worth complaining about, well, before you raise it with me, tell me what the solution is. Are you willing to be the solution maker to that problem, or are you just the wife? Anybody can, can, anyone can criticize. Anyone can complain. That's the easiest thing to do in the world. But it's not as easy to be a solution provider. It's not that easy to get behind uh, Moses and say, Moses, I'm going to help and I'm not going to whine and complain. Even though, you don't think Aaron's arms got tired? You don't think Herb's arms got tired as they helped Moses? But what if they were mo moaning and complaining and whining? Look, they never would have won the battle, right? The teamwork would not have accomplished, the teamwork would not have accomplished right, what they needed to get done against the Amalekites. So please don't be disingenuous. The Bible oh, also, this is the other person you don't want to be. The discourager. The discourager. You don't want to be the one that brings discouragement in a teamwork effort like it is like, like there is this week. Sorry, can you lift up your hands one more time? So Moses is getting tired, right? Moses, you're getting tired. Uh, look, I don't know why you're doing this. You look silly, lift up your hands on top of the hill. It'd just be easier for you to put your hands down. Just, just put your hands down, Moses. Why, why, you know, there's no need to get tired. Put your hands down. Stop working so hard. You're making it difficult on yourselves. You look like an idiot, Moses. Hey, that is the discourager, right? Moses, I told you, put your hands down, Moses. You know, and then you go around. I told Moses, he's tired. He's not listening to me. He doesn't put his hands. If Moses puts his hand down, the Amalekites win. Right? If Moses puts his hands down, the Israelites don't accomplish a great work for God. And so, you can put your hands down. So don't be the discourager. Don't be the one. Look, you know, again, people are putting, we're putting the effort in to serve the Lord. You know what we need? We need encouragement. We need to be edified. We need to be lifted up. We need to be reminded that we're doing such a great work. What an honor to serve our Lord Jesus Christ, who has saved our souls from hell. What an honor to please Him and do a great work for Him. Please don't be a, you know, discouragement. Don't be that, it's so, again, is it easy to be a discouragement? Of course it is. And before you know it, your negativity doesn't just bring you down, it brings down everybody else. Please don't be a discouragement in your church. Be an encouragement to your brethren. Be an encouragement to your pastor. You know, we need to work together. We need to support one another. This is how we accomplish teamwork. This is how we accomplish a great work for our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What does it mean to edify? It means to build up. Okay? It means to help construct. 
you know, to give someone uh, that encouragement they need to continue serving the Lord. Because serving the Lord does get tiring. It is weary sometimes to do a great work for God. And so we need the encouragement. When the Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, the direct uh, context is don't be a discouragement. Because we're to edify. We're to build up. We're not here to tear down one another. And so I'm very thankful for each one of you. My goal in this sermon is to encourage you. My goal in this sermon is to tell you how much I love you and I appreciate you and I truly do appreciate you. Thank you for coming together and being part of this great work for God. So please understand, we need to work as a team. This is not the work of one church. It's not the work of one nation. It's not the work of one man. It's the work of all of us. And let's make sure we're edifying one another. Now, this is the fourth person you don't want to be, okay? This is the fourth person that destroys teamwork. So, if you, you put your hand up again. Oh, Moses, you know, you're, you're doing such a great job, Moses. You know, you're accomplishing great things here. You know, uh, I don't know why you're lifting up your hands. Oh, I mean, it's so good that you're doing this, Moses. Why is it, why? Did God tell him to do that? Oh, Moses, great job, great job. What, what, am I, what am I describing here? It's the passive aggressive individual. The pa- Does anyone know what a passive aggressive person is? They speak sweetly to you, they speak nicely to you on the outside, but just. Uh, like, you're kind of like, well, we're having a good conversation, but all of a sudden there's the attack. Right? It's like, where did that come from? I thought we had a sweet fellowship. Right? Where we're having a great, great, great communication, uh, we're enjoying each other's company. And, oh, did you just attack me? I mean, I don't know. I mean, they're smiling in my face. Passive aggressiveness. And brethren, you know what, 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 what causes passive aggressiveness? Envy. You know, when you look at somebody else and you know they're doing a great work for God and it bothers you, it should not bother you. You know, if people are doing something amazing for God, we should be focused on what we're doing for God rather than comparing ourselves one with another. And boy, you know the passive aggressive person, they think they're very wise. They think they're getting away with all these little attacks, all these little jabs, all these little criticisms, but they're doing it with a smile. They look like they're, 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 they look like they're supportive, but really what they want to do is uh, tear down, they want to criticize, they, they say a few words here and there, but the passive aggressive person thinks that they're getting away with it. Here's what's funny about it. Everybody knows you're passive aggressive. Everyone knows you're not on the team. Everyone knows you're trying to hurt somebody okay but the passive aggressive person thinks i'm too smart for everyone no 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 no. when you're criticizing with a smile constantly it's not just some sarcasm but you're actually on the attack it's obvious to everybody that you're not on the team and brethren i need all of us to be on the same team this week all of us need to be on the same team and look, I'm not, atta- I'm not saying that I've recognized these people on, the t- on, the, on this mission trip. This is just human nature. You know, you, you get yourself together with anybody, whether it's at church or whether it's in your workplace, whether it's your education, whatever it is, right? You're within your family. You're going to find these individuals that love to destroy teams. Okay? And if that's you, if you, in your heart you say, hey, pastor, you're talking about me, I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying, change. Fix it. Do something about it because we're doing something amazing for God and I want you to be part of it. You know what? If you're a self-promoter, I want you to have eternal rewards in heaven. So instead of looking at yourself, look at how you can serve one another. Look how you can serve our Lord Jesus Christ in this work. And once again, I appreciate everybody that has offered their help and support in different areas this week. But please don't be one of these four individuals. And if you're one of those four, change tonight. Okay, go before God and say, God, get my heart right because this is too important. We're in Fiji, you know, uh, we're we're, we're from so many different countries and we need to be able to work together to overcome the Amalekites. Now, let me tell you about some, I'll share just some other great verses on teamwork, okay? Some other great verses on teamwork. Number one, Ecclesiastes chapter four, you guys know these. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse number 9. You can turn there if you like. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse number 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse number 9. The Bible says, Two are better than one. A hundred percent confirmed. 
Ever since I got married, it's better. Okay? <laughs> Two is better than one. Amen. Okay? So this is about teamwork. It says, because they have a good reward for their labor. So again, what are we trying to do together? We're trying to labor together. Brethren, we're going to earn rewards in heaven, but as a team, as a group, we're also earning rewards. We're working together as a group. Like, I can't wait to get to heaven, and I don't know how it's all going to work out, but when we stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ, and He rewards His servants, and for Him to turn around, okay, now it's time to reward Fiji Mission Strip 2024. Let me get the group together. What, if, you know, how beautiful it would be if we could be together and be rewarded by Jesus Christ for the labor that we've done as a team. Now this is the importance of teamwork. Two are better than one. And we've got more than two. Okay? We've got more than two churches. We've got more than two nations. You know? And we've got more than two days. And we've had more than two songs say, praise God. We're doing even better than what we're seeing here in the scripture. Now this is why it's better. Verse number 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to help him up. I mean, Sister Flora, sorry for mentioning you, but Sister Flora had a fall, right? Now praise God that as a team, someone's able to pick her up and help her up on her feet. Praise God there weren't any dangers uh, with your fall. But this is the reality, Reverend. You know, sometimes, like, even today, I was very tired today. I needed a little bit of break. I had a power nap. I got ready for the, uh, the service today. And a few of you guys have done other activities to just, to just uh, refresh yourselves. And praise God for that. But look, even if you're going to seek to be doing other activities, let me encourage you, try to get other people together. Even if it's from other churches. See if you guys can be in fellowship together. Because, hey, again, we need to be able to edify and lift each other up. Okay? Now, the challenges might come where we do fall. Sometimes that falling may not be a physical fall, but it just might be a loss of desire of uh, giving the gospel. Like, I'm getting tired. As we go out through these days, I'm actually getting tired. Normally, I get tired when I, when I go to Solvity. I get tired in my legs. Normally. My feet get tired because you're walking house to house, not interested, not interested, not interested, not interested. So you get tired on your feet. But the rest of you guys know what we're getting tired. We're getting tired mentally. Our voices are getting tired because so many people are so open and receptive to hearing the word of God here in Fiji. Amen. And so let's lift each other up, right? It continues in verse 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I love the story that we had about the demon possessed man. Okay, we had, we had, you know, obviously one man giving the gospel to an individual, and then you've got the other person stepping in, you know, making sure there's no distractions. That's what's wonderful about being within a team or having a silent partner is when those distractions come up, right? It's a team effort. I know someone's doing the preaching, someone's doing the fighting, but the other person's getting ready to make sure, like Moses, lifting their hands up and making sure the battles are being won. This is what's wonderful. These are some great verses about teamwork. Let me quote another one. Proverbs 27, 17. I love this one. I actually love this verse a lot. Iron sharpeneth iron. I feel a little bit sharper this week. I don't know about you, okay? Maybe those that have just come off the plane, you don't feel sharp, just sharp just yet, but in due time, you will. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. You know, when I look at this congregation, even though I, don't, I, know, I know a lot of you, half of you pretty much, I don't, I don't know the other half very well, but you're my friend. You know, not only are you my friend, you're my brother or sister in the Lord Jesus Christ. And my goal, and, and I hope your goal, is that we would sharpen one another. Yes. It says there, sharpen the countenance. The word countenance has to do with our face. The countenance of his friend. Guys, you're giving me a smile. Seeing you guys, fellowship, enjoying your meals, singing. How good was the singing, you know, tonight? Amen. Praise now, Lord, lifting up our voices. I know how tired you are from giving the gospel, and yet you're doing the best you can to lift up your voices to give praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This gives me a smile. And look, I want you to walk away from Fiji with a smile on your face. And if you've got that smile on your countenance, then iron has sharpened iron. We need to be there encouraging once again, sharpening one another. And I love, I just love, I, I wish I could spend time with each one of you guys, but there's too many. <laughs> okay, but anyway, look, praise God for you. Look, teamwork is so important. And like, we may not, like some of us from different countries, we may not even see each other every day until we're in heaven. 
we don't know, this might be the one chance that we have with each other to sharpen one another. So let me encourage you, you know, uh, you know, make sure you meet and greet one another from different churches, all right? Because, you know, let's you know, you're going you're, you're gonna to sharpen each other every week. New life, you're going to sharpen each other every week. But let's make sure that we get to know each other, you know, form friendships, fellowship, because we are a team here in Fiji. Now, in conclusion, come with me to Matthew 28. Come with me to Matthew 28. In conclusion, please. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. And we're going to look at the Great Commission. We're talking about teamwork, right? We are fulfilling the Great Commission right now. We're fulfilling the work that God has given us, Jesus Christ has given us to do, right? The Great Commission, Matthew 28, verse number 19. Matthew 28, verse number 19. These are the instructions given to us by Jesus Christ. Go ye therefore. You say, where do we go? And teach all nations. Somehow in God's calendar, he said it's time for Fiji to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? So we're fulfilling this. Teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Are we doing a baptism tomorrow? Praise God. We'll get a baptism done tomorrow, right? <laughs> I'll give you guys information if we know exactly where it is, if you want to be part of that. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded, commanded you. But the last part is what I want to focus on. And lo, these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And lo, I am with you all way. He just finished telling them to teach all nations. When Jesus says, I am with you all way, what is he saying? I am with you all the way. Amen. You know who's with us tonight? Jesus Christ. Amen. You know who's with us this week? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Like we're telling people about Jesus. We're saying he came 2,000 years ago and he died on the cross and he rose again from the dead. And we're giving them to No, no. Christ is in our midst right now. He's with us all the way. He says, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. And for some, actually, Fiji is pretty close. I didn't realize how close it was to Australia. <laughs> anyway, we're definitely going to be doing future mission trip, you know, to, uh, uh, to Fiji again. But for some of you, Fiji is a bit of a distance, a bit of a, you know, the end of the world or the end of the earth, uh, earth right? It's a bit of a distant country to be part of. And I just want to remind you, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has equipped you, He's given you the resources, He's given you the ability, He's given you the gospel, He's given you your wisdom, He's given you your courage, and He's working with us. Jesus Christ is part of the team, and He's leading this team to do a great work for Him. The power of teamwork. The power of teamwork. Once again, thank you so much for being part of this trip. I mean, just the numbers alone. I was expecting 20, 25. How many are? How many? Look, can I, I'm going to ask every table. Can you please give me the correct number that's sitting on your table? Before, before we end the service, before everyone gets up, can you just quickly give me a count? All right? Because I, I don't know. I counted 60, but it seems like to be maybe less. 58, something like that. I want to get the exact number of how many soul winners we have tonight. Uh, and uh, but again, I, I just I appreciate you guys. I, I do. Thank you so much for your efforts. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the example. I know, I know I'm the pastor, and as a pastor of my church, I need to be an example. But brethren, for those that are in my church, you've been such a great example to me as well. Again, iron sharpener fire. Okay, I enjoy your fellowship. I enjoy your love. And brethren, we have a love for lost souls. There's a love for Fiji. These people already have a great fear of God. They almost have 95% of the gospel, but they just haven't really understood it. They haven't understood that Christ has paid for it all and they've got nothing to pay. They haven't understood that it's eternal life that can never be lost. There's still many of the people that I've spoken to, they're still trusting their works and yet they are so close to being saved. Fiji is such a great place to be. And once again, God has brought you here. Let's work as a team. Understand that Jesus Christ is leading this team. He's part of the team. And brethren, I love you. I love you. Thank you for your service that you've given us uh, this week. Let's pray.